Greetings and salutations, viewers. I am Charles from Inspire the Muse with my better half, Sharon. And we're back for Book Hall of Book Expo America. Day, day two. two. So Friday. Actually, technically it would be day three because Wednesday uh, was also a thing, but we didn't go. Yeah. Because Wednesday's we, kind of... We couldn't justify the expense of travel yeah. and food. Because the show four for is not open. Just the uh, panels and what was offered. Yeah. Ready? So. So, do you want to do these at the same time? Yeah. Ready, Kick. set, go. Begin! So, kicking things off is definitely in my top five. Yeah, it's hard to say it's my number one because of something else that's in here. So, maybe number two. Maybe number two. Solid number two. But Maybe tied for number one. Yes. It's actually two books because it's part of a trilogy. We have The Invasion of Heaven and Leaves of Fire by Michael Kep. Now, if you followed any of our stuff in the past several years, you're familiar with Michael Kep. He is a fabulous human being, and... I will definitely agree with that. I was sitting in a panel recording, and I saw him, like, that looks like Michael. Is that Michael? I think that's Michael. What is Michael doing here? I don't see Michael here. What is going on? I had to look up on Facebook to see, like, he's signing here. That's gotta be him. He cracked my back with... My the hug he gave me. <laughs> he did. He was so that excited is, to see you. That is the type of friends we are. These are the books he's already printed, but he's under a new publisher now, so they're getting a reprint run with... And they're actually very pretty. ...new cover art. And the third one is due to come out, I believe, next year. Yes. So these are the pretty ones for this new print run. And he did say if you have the old ones... Or the previous run, he's going to do another version of that for the third book. So, your books will match. And that is important. <laughs> like, I expressed my concern of that. He yeah. said, oh no, don't worry, don't yeah. worry. Yeah, as book lovers, anybody will understand, books matching is a huge deal. Yeah. Like, do not change format with on me in the middle of a book series. Yeah. I will be mad. Or cover art. Mm. Next up is It's Not Because I'm Better Than You by Don J. Carey III who was a Waldorf publishing author, and I grabbed this in the autograph line, Me. not at the booth. Yep. He seems like a delightful person. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to interview him. Unfortunately, there were too many overlaps, yes. but I'm excited to read the book. Waldorf does good stuff, as I'm sure you've heard from us by now and all the interviews we're going to get. They're also very nice people. Just yes. throw that out there. Next... Broken Circle by J.L. and M.A. Powers. Boop. This was over at Akashic. I wandered both sides of the floor. Your trend was more on one half of the... I unfortunately kind of um, stayed on the side with the huge, the bigger publishers. Um, the heavy hitters. The heavy hitters. I honestly should have spent more time on the other side because the other side had a lot of educational resources. And as, more all ages. Yeah, stuff. so... Um, I as do you'll think, see in the rest of our book. I do think next year I may wander uh, to that side yeah. more than I did. Um, because as a teacher, I think they actually had some resources that would have mm. been pretty cool for me. Uh, Barron's was in the big side, but the rest of yeah. the educational stuff tended to be on the other mm. side. So, And just to put it out there, Akashic is a great group and not nearly heard enough. Yeah. Compared to the big heavy hitters that are there every year. I do feel bad that the Remainders was in, like, between those it, publishers. It was, it was a weird a gray area. Yeah. So you kind of forgot about the other side a little bit. Um, I didn't. You didn't. I did. Um, and that was my fault. But so I was on a mission for certain booths and people to coordinate with, and they were on the other side. So yeah. it worked. I was on a mission, too, but a different mission. Yes. <laughs> As you will see. <laughs> Next up... How to Be a Supervillain by so Michael cute. Fry, who is a fabulous human being. Is he? And surprisingly, I didn't catch this before, another James Patterson Presents book. Yeah, so, they were going hard and heavy on James Patterson Presents. I'm catching a trend here. Yeah. Um, I'm actually all for it. Um, they had a mm. really cool bag um, that it was well made. Like, it is an awesome bag. But on the bag, it said, uh, we want every child to say, give me another book, please. Yes. Uh, which seems to be their thing. I wanted one of those. I couldn't figure out where they were. They were in uh, Hachette. And Hachette. they went fast. They they did drop them every single day, but they were not there yeah. long. See, I didn't go by Hatchet much. 
Hatchet was a fun time. I recommend the Hatchet booth. And they're very nice people in there, too. They weren't cranky. So. Yay. Unlike um, some other booths that we will talk about later. Next up is one that I got for the better half. <laughs> we have Wonder Woman Psychology Lassoing the Truth by Travis Langley and... No, those are edited by Travis Langley and Mara Wood. The author is... Where is it? Where is it? It might have been Langley who got it signed. Yeah. Seems like a bunch of different F- yes, essays. Yes, Travis was the one who helped put it all together. And they got permission by the family who put together Wonder Woman. So I just saw the book. I the book. It's pretty. There you go. This is why she's the better half. <laughs> but I'm fascinated. I want to read this one. Yeah, no, because that it's about really the entire cool. history of the Wonder Woman character and persona and everything i was actually really curious about that but it overlapped with the one goal i had for friday so unfortunately i did not stand in that line i stood in another line we'll talk about it later Mm. (laughs) next up the tea dragon society by katie o'neill it's so cute looking it's an adorable uh art style it's a little book she was a delight she I felt so bad for her after I heard the story of she travels a ridiculous amount, like from here to Japan and then over to Chicago oh. and like that type of travel. Like she's on a 24 hour flight. Oof. Like she traveled a lot. Ah, uh, that's rough. Over one of the people at Oni Press and they have some great stuff. I'm mm-hmm. really looking forward to getting in touch with them later. That was a cute little booth. Yeah. So I actually wanted this one personalized to me but they weren't personalizing yeah that's i think enough. they ran out of time and if but, you travel that much honestly yeah but that was on my i want this list yep. that was cute i actually they did um the other thing is she did that several times yes uh, so there if were you missed one drops. you could have gotten another one signed so that's kind of yeah. cool and occasionally like two drops per day yeah one in the morning one in the afternoon so which if you missed it you had I a chance to try that. again yeah Next one up is The First by Kipcho Ewers, who you'll see eventually on our channel that we interviewed about his series. He seems like an amazing human being, just to put that out there. And this was through the Evo universe, which is his thing. Like, it's not through one of the other publishers. It was one of the smaller, like, self-published groups, so we love giving them attention as well. Exactly, and And, as I said, he was an amazing man, so... um... I look forward to reading this. Yeah. Like, BookCon was rough. He was the highlight of BookCon. Yes. One of the highlights. One of the highlights, but he was... Yeah, he's pretty cool. (laughs) Next up was the one book I wanted for the day. Like, if I get something, it has to be this. He stood in the author ticketing line for this. Apparently, I didn't need to fight as much for this as I thought... Compared to the last time. The around. only reason you didn't is because it overlapped with the other heavy hitters of the day. Uh, it's yeah. hard to compete with Chad Michael Murray. Um, <laughs> he's Fair a enough. gorgeous man. And uh, another book we'll talk about later that dropped at the same time that I'm pretty sure entire book expo was in that line with me. <laughs> if this was during Book Con. Oh, if it was during Book Con. would have been a different It would have been scenario. a different story. But how about we actually say what we're talking about? <laughs> It Devours by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner, effectively the next book from Welcome to Night Vale. I think it was two book expos ago. That was an insane line that you said about... I got the Welcome to Night Vale arc when their first book came out. I fought legitimately, not physically, not literally, for that one, but... I fought for that one. Yeah. I waited in a long line. <laughs> there was a fight for that one. This one? No. Like, I had a ticket. I was, like, seventh in line after a few people had the uh, cut to the head of the line tickets. Yeah. I don't think... Um, I think they expected that to be a heavier hitter than it was. It might have just been awkwardly timed. And to be fair, I don't think that it wasn't a heavy hitter per se. I think it was awkwardly timed with other things yeah. going on. Because there was some... one uh, thirty to 2.30... At Book mm. Expo on Friday was... Everything. Literally everything. All the heavy hitters at once. So it was really yeah. prioritizing, I think, what you wanted. Do you want to do this at the yes. same time? Because they're... It's sequel. These are really pretty covers. And then this part. Yep. So we... One of the first things we did that day was wander over to some groups that have multiple 
like magazines mm -hmm. and trades and whatnot, smaller groups. But I started talking to Lauren Bird Horowitz, and she's writing a trilogy. And the first two books were available already. And they had a lovely packaging setup put together after talking did. to them. Um, I think, though, you're wrong. I think the first one's out, and the second one appears to be an arc. This based, is why she's the better half. Based on the sticker on side, yes. I don't think the second one is available for purchase yet, but it is going to be. So the first one is Shattered Blue, book one of the Light Trilogy. Look at these covers. Like, these covers are gorgeous. Just saying. Because I feel like indie publishing, sometimes the covers need work, but these yes. covers do not need work at all. I am and all over this. Book two is Renegade Red. Boop. And an interesting thing about this one, or one of the interesting things is, they actually had the cover artist there. And she's done like three to six different covers for hmm. each book. Really? So they had some on the books. They Some of the posters had the different cover art well, at really the cool. booth. And they're all cool. I'm intrigued by the fact that the second book is actually the Warrior Edition. Huh. Which is just a cool touch. Okay, I have now no see, idea what that entails. But. Now that he tells me this, though, I'm going to have to look up these other cover covers that she has. And yes. Get, like, complete sets because it's crazy. And um, it is worth looking into because she mentioned, I forget which book it was. It might have been for the third. The model they had for that is one of their family members. Oh, it was like their cool. little niece, Aww. I want to say. Don't quote me on that. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But it was a family member. And like, that's really cool. That is cool. Keep it in the family. But, um, but the other cool thing about this. Yes. They gave both books in just a nondescript little bag. But it comes with all sorts of swag, like a giant button for Renegade Red and a little bit of promo stuff for it. And yeah. it was a nice way to package everything together. I appreciate nice packaging. Yes. It makes a difference. And it's also nice, like, this way you don't have to grab everything on the table. You get everything in one shot in a yeah. bag. It's all self-contained. So I thought that's kind of a cool idea. This is going to be closer to the top of my pile to read because these sound really cool. Yeah, no, they do. Fairies. I'm all for it. Next is Brave by Svetlana Chimakova. Sorry if we pronounce these wrong. Now... If this art style looks familiar to you, it's because she, she wrote Awkward in the same art style. And I know that was a big, that was a really cool series, yeah. which I personally haven't read, I but I thought this was really cool. I wanted to snag a copy and check it out because what does it mean to be brave? I think that's a good question. Who doesn't want to learn about that? Oh, Yen Press. Okay. Yeah. It's also by Yen Press. They do Spice and Wolf. They do a lot of great series. I trust Yen Press. They do good work. I'm not an anime person, but I am aware of them, and I have <laughs> anime versions of some of my favorite books that they have done. So, Manga versions? Manga versions. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's not my thing. I warned you. <laughs> to really frustrate people. Manga. Mm -hmm. Or manga. Next up, They Didn't Teach This in Worm School by Simone Leah. It looks like a the cute little... Um, book. This was just a book drop, or not even a book drop, it was just there. Mm -hmm. They didn't actually physically drop them, don't worry, <laughs> over at Candlewick, along with... This book looks adorable, I'm not gonna lie. The like, it's way under my age level, but... <laughs> the Nutcracker Mice by Christine Cladstrup. Boop. I love any retelling of the Nutcracker, so... And it has illustrations that are yes. adorable within. They both looked cute, and I thought... Why not? Yeah. It would be... I like reading all... Literally all age ranges mm -hmm. because so long as it's engaging... Yeah. It's worth reading. Next up, Elizabeth and Zenobia by Jessica Miller. This was another one on my list that I was hoping to grab or catch at some point over by Amulet Books. Uh, Which is an imprint under of Abrams. Our, Abrams, sorry. Yes. Yeah, Abrams. Because the premise intrigued me and the cover art... Is really cool. I like this style of cover art. You know, it was at the end of the day Friday. Yeah. They actually dropped it a little bit late. I went to grab it mm. for him, and I was like, Where's I was in another yeah. line? You were in a panel with Veronica Roth. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. So I went and grabbed it. But We're going to the kitty section now. Yes. Sorry, we're dialing things down a little bit. 
We got Friends and Mates in 50 States <laughs> by Ellen Weisberg and Ken Yoffe. Uh, I would recommend subscribing to our channel if you have not yet, because we actually interviewed Kevin Yoff Ken Yoffe sorry, <laughs> about this book, and we went into detail about how it was put together, and it's really cool. Is like, it? I would recommend this to teachers of a certain grade or age range for as a supplement mm -hmm. for learning about the 50 states and they're actually doing international ones for various countries but oh, that's really cool they'll, they actually did all sorts of little quick hits and stuff about each state and some of the highlights of what's in that state what do they have and that would be good for elementary school yeah, grades. it was really cool and again, Waldorf Press. Yeah. So. Waldorf is always good. This was another one that dropped several times. You had several chances to catch it. Yes. And I'm glad I did. We have Rapunzel by Bethan Wolven. This is a little big, so we have to pull back. Like, I want to read this quickly because it's a short little picture book, but we did not get this for ourselves. No, we didn't. I have an adorable goddaughter that yes. um, we got this for, so... But it looked like it looks like an adorable adaptation. It does. This one, I'm not gonna lie. If I didn't have a goddaughter, I would have picked this up anyways. Actually, I think this one's for her sister, um, my adorable little second cousin, or whatever she is. But she's adorable. Um, Family relations. Yeah. My favorite little children. We have The Mermaid by Jan Brett. Love Jan Brett. Her art style is unparalleled. I think I used to love her as a child. Now, if you're curious about this one, it is Goldilocks, but underwater. Oh, I didn't know that. That's kind of cool. That's the adaptation or interpretation. So instead of bears, you have octopi. Haha, <laughs> that's cute. I like it. So I kind of want to read a, this one quickly. Yeah, as well, I'll read that quickly because too. Because this is cool. Yeah. And it also came with a f nice tote it's bag. It's a gorgeous tote bag, and it has like a little coloring thing in there, so it's really cool. All right, this next book, let me tell you. <laughs> the last one that I snagged was actually on the way back from the Wonder Woman psychology book. Mm -hmm. I passed it on the way there and thought, that's really cool, but I'm on a mission. Yeah. And she was still there when I came back, like, okay, I gotta get it. <laughs> it is Blossom Plays Possum, Because She's Shy, by Birdie Jones, illustrated by Janet McDonald. And before the before this recording, we actually read it quickly because I was actually kind of intrigued. Mm -hmm. What is this about? I wish I had this book as a child. I do too. Like, I cannot praise this book enough. Like, we're going to do a separate book review just of this because we've already read it, yep. so it'll be easy to do, but check this book out. Yeah, if you were ever a shy child or you have a shy child or you know of one in your mm -hmm. life, this book, Or I ones think, with social anxiety. Yeah, someone's with social anxiety, like, pick up this book. It, if it's nothing really... else, if you're concerned about the... It, content for your age they also have a note to parents and other caregivers on the back that's about three pages worth of adult level information as yeah. we get distracted by a car outside <laughs> sorry the cat's staring at it i'm staring at it now the I'm dog sure. will bark at it in a yes. minute <laughs> but i'm yeah. really glad i picked this up yeah i know that this was a surprise that is a surprise and a good one actually yes. at that so Again, I'm not a child. I do not have children, but still would recommend We them. know them. We do. I sometimes act, sometimes act we like sometimes. one. sometimes. <laughs> you are my child. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I did not pick up as many books on Friday as I did on Thursday. Um, part of it being that a lot of the drops were repeats, which is appreciated because if you missed it on Thursday, you had a chance again. Or if you only get a day badge. Yeah. Or if you only get a day badge. Um, the other part being I stood in line forever. I have talked. But um, the first one is a repeat because I picked it up with him at the end of the day. Uh, Michael Kep, The Invasion of Heaven in Leaves of Fire. Uh, he has read, you've read the first one, but so not the second yet. The, when it first came out, I read the first one on the train home and on the train there the next day. I finished it and I had to go back to him and tell him, like, I read this in less than 24 hours. When does the next one come out? Because I need it. Yeah, so he came highly recommended. And let me tell you, Michael Kep is an amazing man. Um, just socializing with yes. him for that 10 minutes that we were there. Um, 
he seems incredible. Uh, so I hope you guys get some more content out of him, which he seems more than happy to do. But yes. talk about an amazing, friendly human being uh, who actually used a fountain pen to sign with, which I appreciate because I think that's really cool. With style. With style. So, yeah, Michael Kep, check him out. We can't say enough good things about this man. Uh, the next book I have is Wild Beauty by Anne-Marie McLemore. She was in the signing line. Um, she was a very chatty author, so it was a very long line. Not because it was a long line, but it took a while because she talked to everybody. But she seems like an amazing human being. Um, I've actually read some early reviews on this. It's post. It's come up on Tumblr hmm. as being a really good book. Um, and there was there was a significant line for this, so it's going to be a heavy hitter. Um, and it looks really good. So we'll check it out. I'm excited. Cool. Uh, the next one. Oh, be still my little fangirl heart. Mm -hmm. um, I had an amazing time at Book Expo because not only books, but Thursday I didn't get his book because I was too late and the line was too long and I didn't know about it in time. It but happens. Mr. Feeney was there on Thursday. I was 10 feet from Mr. Feeney. Talk about childhood idols. He is the teacher that I wanted, I want to be and I aspire to be. So William Daniels was there signing and He just, taught our generation. He taught our generation and it was just so cool that he was there. And I am kind of sad that I didn't know in time mm. to get in that line. The name just did not trigger. Surprisingly. Actually, I don't even think I saw the name because if I yeah. saw the name, I would have made the connection. But unfortunately, I didn't in time. But I was 10 feet from him. That's all I needed. However, Friday... <laughs> I got to meet Neil Patrick Harris. Um, I was ecstatic. I stood in the ticket, the off their ticketing line, but there was plenty of tickets, so it seemed like most people who mm. wanted to meet him got to meet him. Uh, it was a quick line. They try to keep it snappy because Neil Patrick Harris, so um, he couldn't personalize anything, and you were not supposed to take pictures with him, but people were, and he was taking pictures with people, even though his handlers were getting very cranky. So let me tell you, he is an amazingly charming and handsome man, um, even in person. He talked to me for a couple minutes, so he did actually spend time with people probably more than his handlers would have liked him to. Um, but I, I was just... I don't want to so... be mean to handlers, but I appreciate the people who frustrate their handlers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they are I understand why the handlers are the way they are, but Neil Patrick Harris, everybody, and he signed <laughs> a copy of his book that is coming out, The Magic Misfits. Um, hold on, I'll show you the signature because I have to. Neil Patrick Harris signed my book. He touched the book. I talked to him. Um, he's just one of those people I admire so much. He seems like such a genuinely mm. nice person. I think his family is adorable. His Halloween mm. costumes with his family are on point. Um, this is definitely uh, middle grade, but I'm excited to read it anyways. Mm -hmm. I got a I got an actual other advanced copy as a drop that'll probably go to my granddaughter or my goddaughter. Granddaughter, I'm not that old. Um, but I'll probably give it to my goddaughter, but this one's mine, and I'm going to cherish it forever. Um, Neil Patrick Harris, everybody, the fangirl in me. Mm. I, Dr. Horrible sing-along blog. Like Somebody told me I should have been like, wait for it, legendary. Um, but <laughs> I didn't. I, I kept it inside. My uncle was like, you met Doogie! Yes, I did. That was before my generation, but I do know who Doogie Hauser is. Uh, the next one I have is Before I Let Go by Marika Nakamp. Um, this is, this seems like a really cool book. I'm not into contemporary, but it, the premise intrigued me. Uh, I stood in a little bit of a long line for this. It was at a booth, Source Books, actually. But I've heard good things about Marika Nakamp. If you don't know her, uh, she is one of the people that founded the We Need Diverse Books movement. In fact, she Which had Which I fully support. Yep. Uh, in fact, she actually had a panel in book con about mm. we need di diverse books but let me tell you her as a person she has the most fabulous hair it's blue <laughs> and pink and she has a really cool tattoo she was a lot of fun to talk to for a minute or two because she will talk to you um i saw her and actually i think the macklemore the emory macklemore signing she was in and was talking to fans in that line as well um so an amazing human being if nothing else and i'm excited to read this book um so yeah that's her but Check her out. Check out We Need Diverse Books because that they is are great people. They doing are great, great people doing great things for the publishing world. Um, and she is actually from the Netherlands, so she has a oh, she has that. a really cool accent <laughs> as well. So, yeah, uh, this one, the Nowhere Girls. 
uh, by Amy Reed. I This was, I think, the last book I picked up of the day. It was a random drop. Again, this is more contemporary than I would have normally gone for, but it's about um, a bunch of different girls dealing with uh, who find their voices and their strength. Um, it talks about rape culture. So I'm a feminist with a capital F. Sorry, that's our cat. Um, One of them. So uh, this is something that I think I really do want to read and just um, I just I'm not sure if I would put this in the classroom library just because of the subject definitely matter. Definitely read it first. Yeah, definitely read it first because that can get me in huge trouble. Mm. But I do like that these are things that are now being talked about and that the books are available for people to read. If you're going yeah. through anything, you may not feel alone anymore. If nothing so, else, read it so you can recommend it unofficially Unofficially to others. to others. But yeah, so this one, the premise really caught me. I don't expect it to be a happy book at all, but I do think that I am glad that these are subjects that are being talked about in print somewhere. So... Anyways, As I scan the back. The Nowhere Girls. I'm going to save this one for last. <laughs> uh, the first book I picked up of the day is A Secret History of Witches by Louisa Morgan. This is, uh, I think it was Hachette again. Uh, this is an adult book, but it sounds... Um, it intrigued me. Let's say it had witches in the title, so I grabbed it. But uh, And then looking at the back, I'm glad I did. This seems like a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah. And it's it's a hefty book, if you could see. <laughs> this one might take me a while. But this was just a random drop that I grabbed. Uh, the next one is The Hazel Wood by Melissa Albert. Um, I was walking by Macmillan, I think this one is by, and they were giving them out, basically, hmm. like, begging you to take them, because nobody was over there at the... I forget what was going on at the same time, but uh, there weren't many people over there, but they were handing them out. Hmm. Uh, it's a dark fairy tale in the back, so I'm like, yeah, I'll go for that. Um, so, it's a fairy tale. It's endorsed by Kristen Kishore, which I talked about her in my last haul, so I'm actually excited for this. I... Cool. Don't know too much about it, which is kind of cool sometimes going to a book being like, I've never heard of this, or the author, I know nothing about it. <laughs> so I'm excited. We'll see what happens with... That's half the fun of these conventions. You get yeah. to find some stuff you're not necessarily familiar with. or Exactly. And then I get to talk to people about it. Yeah. I stood in a long line for this one. I didn't <laughs> expect it to be as long as it was. But The Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foody. Uh, this is her first book. It's by Harlequin Teen. Let me tell you, Harlequin has their stuff together. They have the best bags, number one. Uh, number two, their lines were well-managed. I stood in a very long line for this. Um, I don't think they expected it to be as long as it, the line as long as it was. Hmm. Uh, but this seems to be a surprise heavy hitter. Um, the author seems really cool. She was really nice. Um, and she did a cool doodle in the book. I don't know if you can see, but she drew a little circus tent <laughs> in the book, which is probably why it was taking a while, because she was talking to everybody, and she seemed really excited to be there. So, um, this kind of has a circusy fantasy bent from Harley Quintine. Um, so, this seems like it could be a lot of fun. I'm excited for it. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> there was that one. That was the first line I stood in at the day, for the day, and that killed a good portion. But I met a really cool person in line, so we talked for a while about food and dogs, so... Worth it. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about food and animals, we're good. <laughs> All right, so the next one I have is historical fiction. The half Drowned King by... I'm really sorry if I mispronounce this desperately, but B Linnea Hartsucker. Uh, Viking... It's Game of Thrones and Viking type of thing. Yeah, so it says for fans of Game of Thrones, Vikings, and Outlander... I, That's what caught my eye. Yeah, I'm all over this. I'm very excited for it. It's a hefty book. I have it personalized and signed. So um, hopefully, I get to borrow it eventually. Yeah, as long as you don't hurt it. <laughs> I'll try. But um, it's a pretty cover. This was um, there was a nice line for this. I was kind of excited that people were in line. But um, yeah, I like Norse mythology. Uh, it's something I'm kind of interested in. So in Vikings. So yeah. This is an exciting <laughs> book for me. That was one of my things. Uh, this one was a random drop. And it's not even an arc. This book has been out for years. But <laughs> it has some like promotional material. If anybody... I can't show you because they, they bundled it up. But um, 
The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. Yeah, you know who he is. I mean, that's not new. No, it's not. Um, this is not new at all. But they're really promoting uh, Philip Pullman's Book of Dust because he's going back to his Dark Materials world. Hmm. So I adored The Golden Compass when I read it the first time. Um, and I'll be honest, I haven't read the last two. And I heard that I'm not missing anything. So maybe I'll just stick to this one. But... I don't know where my copy went, so I'm very <laughs> excited that I got another one. <laughs> that works. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest. I'll probably buy the Book of Dust and check it out um, because I did when I first read this. I adored it so much. Hmm. I I really well, do. I, I'm excited that I have a new copy to reread it. And um, a nice one at that. Yeah. And the people like – and the other thing is I think this was YA – Kind of before YA became popular. So some of the people who haven't read it yet have a chance to. Hmm. Um, or at least are getting... It's getting more publicity so they can pick it up. So that's kind of exciting. Um, let's not talk about the movie adaptation because we just pretend it doesn't exist. There was a movie. Nope. There's no movie. No. Nope. But yeah, saw The Golden Compass. I was kind of excited about that's that cool. one. And I think in the envelope there may be a preview of The Book of Dust. But don't quote me on that. I'm not sure what's in the envelope. It may just be like a poster for the Book of Dust. Um, they were really pushing that, though, because the books, hmm. the um, stairs at Book Expo slash Book Con had um, Philip Pullman, the Book of Dust. Oh, yeah. All the way down. Like, it looked like a book cover all the way down. That's the one they're promoting this year. So that's going to be a heavy hitter when that comes out. I don't think it has a cover yet. All right. So the next one I have has the most gorgeous cover. <laughs> um, Odd and True by Cat Winters. This is a book that's actually on my... Um, pre-order list, or it was, hmm. let's be honest, because the cover is really cool looking and eye-grabbing. But, um, this is an amulet book, uh, so Abrams, drop this. I was in the Amanda Foodie line. <laughs> but the fun part of making friends is that my line friend went, I s held her place in line, and she went and grabbed copies for both of us. So I would have missed the drop otherwise, so I'm really appreciative to the woman who went and grabbed this for me. I'm very excited to read it. Um, but yeah, so make line friends. They're, they're good to have. I did that several times, um, where I held spots or I went and grabbed something. So, yeah. Magical historic, historical fiction. I'm all for it. But honestly, let's be honest, the cover's pretty. Hmm. That's what grabbed my eye and then the premise grabbed me. Uh, the other one I grabbed <laughs> is actually for, more for him than for me, but it was Yay. a random book drop. I can't remember where. It says Touchstone, so whatever that's under. It might be Simon & Schuster. I, can't. I don't remember offhand. Um, but anyways, this was a random drop at the first thing in the morning. The Last Castle by Denise Kiernan. She wrote The Daughters of the Burning City, uh, which he really liked and he enjoyed, so I grabbed this for him. Um, this... Daughters of Atomic City? The Girls of Atomic okay. City. We blended the two. I'm We're tired. Close. So, anyways, this was oh, yeah, something... Oh, yeah, then I'm all in. Yeah. Uh, it's not historical. It's just a historical book about history, um, but it That's seemed fun. really cool. Um, what is it about? Oh, oh. Biltmore House. So, uh, it's a hmm. huge estate in North Carolina, so it's kind of the history of that. Um, so I'm actually interested in this as well. Her writing style was great, so I'm all for it. Yeah, so I, I picked it up because it looked interesting. As Yay. I said, multiple interests. The uh, next one, not for me. Next one the husband is not even allowed to touch. Um, this was my one goal on Friday. I knew it was happening. Mm. Um, they did publish it well, unfortunately. Um, but this was like literally if I got nothing else on Friday, I was going to get this book. But yet I had no hope that I was going to be able to get this book because I knew... It was going to be the heavy hitter of the day. You were going to stand in line mm. for it. You were going to fight for it. So This was your Night Vale book. This was my Night Vale book. Um, you fought more. I did. And I stood in line for two hours for this. Um, I was actually towards the front of the line because I, was, I got there ridiculously early and there was already a, a line happening. Mm. Um, and we'll get into the lines and line management on our other segment because it left some to be desired. Penguin, I love you, but work on your line. But, um, so I stood in line for two hours. I made some really cool friends. Uh, I will say that they were all adults. There was no trampling happening 
only because we managed the line, not because <laughs> Penguin managed the line. Um, but, and I think I could be wrong, but I do think that everybody that was in line got a book. I don't think they ran out. Um, so that is good. I so. think they realized the importance of that. Yeah, I think they knew how big of a heavy hitter. They knew and they didn't know how big of a heavy. They had enough books, but they weren't ready to. What I don't know what was going on, but shenanigans. Shenanigans was happening. This was a struggle. I honestly did think about getting out of the line several times, and if it did turn into a mob scene, I was gonna I'd jump out. out. Um, I would bail because even though this was my goal, I'm not willing to be trampled <laughs> for a book. Um, but anyways, this is something I'm willing to pre-order just for myself. Yeah, no, I'm pre-ordering so it anyways. I want I'm to perfectly happy dropping money on this one. Yeah. Anyways, so my crowning glory for all of Book Expo 2017. Wonder Woman by Lee Bardugo. I'm so excited to read this. Is that top of the list for it, you to read? It is actually top of the list for me to read. Um, I stood in line so long, hmm. so long for this. My feet were killing me. It was a struggle. But it was well worth it. She signed it. It wasn't even a galley drop. It was a line signing. I would have been fine if it was a galley drop and I still would have stayed in line. Let's mm. be honest. But um, she signed it to me. Lee Bardugo. I met Lee Bardugo. Like, I am over the moon about this. Nobody touch this book. <laughs> I might not even... Don't touch the book. <laughs> nope. I might not even read this arc. This might just sit on my shelf until I get the published copy because it's signed and it's pretty. And I fought. So I didn't physically and fight. Fair enough. I was not ready to physically yeah. fight. I made line friends. We all worried about getting trampled for this. Um, but and I'm curious about this entire little mini series yeah, this that is DC is doing. A really and how cool they're doing thought. it. Um, but hold on, let me see. That's the one I really want to read out of the mini series. Yeah, there. Just to fill everybody in on this, uh, it looks like it's Random House that's publishing it. So Penguin Random House, but they're doing a whole DC Icon series by popular oh it was in the front too oh. um by popular like YA authors they've gotten to write them so wonder woman by lee bardugo is the first one coming out um it's between 2017 and 2019 and i'll be honest i don't know the publishing order of these i do think it's written in publishing order but don't quote me um the next one i think is going to be catwoman by sarah j mass i'm super excited for that too I love her writing style. I'm ambivalent on the character, but yeah, I, I'm sure it'll be fun. I've watched the Catwoman movie, and let's just say it was not a good time, but I will read it because I adore Not a paragon Jonas. of cinema? No. <laughs> uh, and then the one, uh, Batman by Mary Lou, is going to be a thing that's happening. I'm not a Batman fan, but also I will pick that up because Mary Lou. Um, hopefully she'll be able to do something that's not like angsty Batman. Batman. I'm but. sure it's already written, if not fully drafted and written mm -hmm. and prepped, but can we do some more Adam West-style Batman somewhere down the line, <laughs> please? I'm getting tired of all this grit in my face. <laughs> I need more bam, pow. Sometimes, Sometimes you just can't, can't get, get rid, rid of, of a bomb. bomb. Yeah. <laughs> We're all for that. We need more of that in our lives. And then the last one in the series, unless they could decide to continue it, which that would be really cool too, um, is Superman by Matt De La Pena. Um, so one, I like that they got major, uh, female writers in to do most of this, mm -hmm. um, and that they're focusing on two female characters. Um, I have faith in Sarah G. Moss to actually do Catwoman justice because as a character, I like her, but I feel she has been... There's a lot <laughs> you can do with that yeah. character respectably. I feel like she... That would be fascinating. <laughs> she doesn't deserve what she has gotten. <laughs> Uh, at least for her own movie. I did like her in actually the um, Dark Knight. Um, hmm. Or whatever one she was in. The last Batman movie I did like with the Catwoman. But she didn't get enough screen time. So justice for Catwoman. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, yeah. Hashtag. Hashtag. <laughs> so um, just going to warn you, if Catwoman happens to be an arc that's coming out for next book expo. That'll be the next one to fight for. I think it may actually be worse than Lee Bardugo. Moss. Yeah. Uh, that one I may actually not bother <laughs> to try to get. Not because I don't love Sarah J. Moss. I do. do. She's my favorite author of all time. Go to our website to see how we 
handled a book signing yeah. with Sarah James. I'm um, just saying that line is going to be insane. Uh, they might do that as a ticketed author. I wouldn't be surprised. I, they would have They to. should. They should. They uh, should have done this yeah. as a ticketed author. Penguin, take my advice. Ticketed author is your way to go. No mob scene. Hmm. Anyways, so that's what I got on Friday. And the reason I didn't get as many books is because I spent two hours waiting for this. Hashtag worth it. (laughs) That is everything that the two of us got on day two for us. Day three for the overall convention of Mm -hmm. Book Expo America 2017. Yep. We had a lot of fun. It was a blast. It was worth it by all means. I will never be able to walk again. (laughs) I think I will be permanently crooked. Yeah, I because of the weight of books. I've pinched like I don't even want to know how many nerves. I have mm. huge bruises. It's, it's still not worth it. It's not pretty. But would do again. Definitely. For our full review of Book Expo and coming soon Book Con, we're all tied together. <laughs> check out our podcast, the Sparks to Life podcast. This will that episode will be coming out on the fifteenth of this month, June. That'll be the full coverage of our of the good, the bad, and the ugly for mm-hmm. both conventions, along with another convention that our co-host Justin joined in on. And let's he, just say, I, do we think we need any books for the? This might hold me over until Book Expo next year. <laughs> this is what happens. Yeah, this uh, is the beauty of Book Expo. So I will be doing book reviews until the end of time. <laughs> and we're not going to do book hauls for some other things, but uh, I just received a book in the mail. <laughs> Which is the first book of a series that I'm getting an arc of the second book for, thanks to Book Expo Networking. Yeah, so, so. we'll never need reading material until no. next year again. It's going to take me forever. Yeah. And I read fast. <laughs> yes. If you want to check out our coverage of Book Con, mm-hmm. hit that subscribe button because we'll be doing that video soon, along with, I believe, 14 interviews over the course of. The full three days that we were there. Plus, who knows how many others that I'm working on scheduling post-convention. Not just from a couple publishers that we're friends with, but like a good dozen or two. Like, I have a lot of networking to do. He is good at networking. I know Justin doesn't appreciate it. (laughs) But, yes, please hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when new stuff goes up. And if you attended Book Expo... Post in the comments, what did you get? What was your book haul? Yeah. Did you fight in as many lines? Did you did see you me in fun? line? Did we talk? Like, let's be friends. <laughs> if we're line friends, please reach out to us because yeah. we enjoy making new friends. We do. And talking about books. And hey, if you're reading any of these, what did you think? Yeah, please. Tell me. I like to talk books, even if your opinions don't agree with mine. We're able to disagree. We are? We do it often. <laughs> so until next time... Go read a book. Go have some fun. I know I am.